This is a reading of These Bells of Six, a project by Burning Cicada LTD. Ante initium, the between of these, the white unseen words, fade in. An orator stands on a hill with a watchful gaze. Three stars appear out of the white of the north. These the black burning omens of a cruel's fate own breath. The orator smiles as he looks on upward towards the trio with a playful antagonism, cocking his head as an old goat or owl he scratches his nose. The orator begins to dig into the ground slowly. He continues deeper and yet deeper still the old hands sifting the dirt away. He plays in it for a moment, building with the dirt as he smiles. Order. Hear the voice hidden beneath this forgotten terror. Listen and see what dreams may paint this living sky awake again. We call to these the fire song of Ember's tongue. A glowing kiss beneath this buried spirit To cast its shadows' memories and dance On the words of a false promise. Wrinkling his already aged lips To again scratch his nose, He plays with his long beard. There is a door here that is buried deep. The order pulls and a deeper tomb is revealed with staircases going down. At the bottom is a sarcophagus along with four strange stone creatures holding it in place and blinking up as the orator looks down into the darkness. The orator smirks. There are glyphs carved into the sarcophagus as well. On the top is the number six. The orator rubs the number with his finger for a moment then his own temple. The order puts his hands over his mouth. As he moves his arms away from his face, his mouth is absent. The order makes a triangular shape with his hands, and a mouth appears, centers in these hands. It speaks. Order. Release this soul to my care. I will stand for it. The carved face of the sarcophagus opens its eyes in bewilderment. The four stone creatures blink, casting shadows with the luminescence of their eyes. They appear terrified. The glyphs turn and open by the command of the orator. The orator brings its mouth back to his face where it again resides. Again a moment is spent to look at the old relic. Inside is a long staff a number of blank scroll parchment, and a ring of bells. Also inside is a sleeping serpent that quickly wakes and strikes. Upon biting the order, the snake appears to writhe and die, and the order begins to take out the pieces one by one and begins assembling them back together. The stone creatures sink deep back into the terra. Order. Deep secrets protect the falseness of desire's illusions. Want does not lie, it only knows to consume complete, beckoning to the great void, until all hope within is filled with an endless emptiness. It is only a hungry child, servant of compulsions remade. Tell them they have made themselves slaves by choosing to be filled with what only wishes to consume their joy and leave them with no purpose. With this, the orator produces a bowl, rips the dead snake in half, and uses its blood to begin writing words on the blank parchment. The orator then reanimates the snake and fashions it into a white deer by blowing on the pieces of the snake. When the orator is finished, it stops for a moment and begins looking down at its hands. As the order continues to speak, ten staircases begin to grow, 
each out of the orator's fingers. The staircases ascend into open mouths of the many assorted faces that suddenly appear. Each one of the faces wears a varied emotion and purpose from the others. Anger, joy, hope, repulsion to note a few. Growing out from the heads of each are the thoughts that would seem to whisper and misguide. These voices that distinguish and occupy the ten characters are lies and are told and easily believed, such as how we rely on our worth, perspective, and wants. Each face is connected to the others by bridges that grow off of their faces. The deer the orator has called begins to climb each staircase sharing a different message than what the faces have heard from their own perspective voices and disease. The deer moves from one to the other, whispering in the ears. The broken, diseased thoughts begin to die and shrivel as weeds. Order. We, the stuff of dreams that live here between these moments of ill choice and consequence, are as the bridges of salt that carry on to the next day's promise. And what makes that promise? Clarity that is quickly traded for illusions? Soil disenchantments that sing to the heart, mind, and soul? How quickly the sure footing slips when the foundation is built on nothing more than the greatness of a pride that cannot see beyond the hunger of a moment's compulsions. As each of the faces is visited by the white deer, they begin to cry, and the salt staircases crumble back into the order's hands. The faces also crack and dissipate into nothing, leaving small ornaments that the orator collects and fashions on the instrument. When finished, the deer turns back to the dead snake, wet with the tears that have rained down on the orator's hands. Order. What sacrifice is this? There are timeless moments of which afford the opportunity to mark change. Always a moment to change when truth is given the opportunity to sup at the heart of one that is willing to make change their guide. The orator stands now besides an instrument of recollection and purpose, this a bell tree that has been fashioned with words of a forgotten tongue, but with the things of which hold all together. These, the words the orator has written, is now tied to this instrument flowing in the wind as the tail of a playful kite. The orator touches the words on the instrument for a moment. Looking up again, he takes three coins from a bag, kisses each and drops them to the ground beneath the omens in the sky. Order. We shall see what you sing and what you remember. Come and tell your stories. The order shakes the bell tree. The stoic stars now blink as the coins rise to the stars and seem to reside in them. The orator then produces a flute. Very soon, the music of the flute calls to many strange and wonderful creatures. Many approach. There is a ferocity in their composure, but also a compassion and protection. These beasts watch the looming stars above with eyes glowing brightly. Two of the largest creatures now emerge on either side of the hill the orator has been standing on. The creatures drive two objects into the ground. These appear to be the two ends of a giant scroll. The stars above seem amused now shining down with strange smiling auras, glad to be called to be part of the game. These the judges three. The music of the orator soon puts all to sleep, as words now begin to emerge out of the eyes and mouths of the sleeping creatures, called by the flute. These words rise up moving about as smoke that then join the ancient mosaic poem that begins to occupy what is now clearly a scroll. 
On the scroll, moving characters can be seen as shadow puppets that move across and mirror the words that the orator now directs onto the scroll. There's something happening here. This is the song of want and how it began to speak and reside in us all. The words begin to appear as such on the scroll. The fire song sings in the breath of the kind as it echoes and the echoes and the echoes through time. Perfect in shape, purpose, and design. It will come when it's called by any that choose to hold it inside. It may burn awake what is seen and unknown. It may show the way to the lost on this road, but always it does burn away all the lies that we do feed ourselves as we do compromise. The splinter of our spirit and heart that we knew as we bend and we break as there is something due. So do not give it rest as it knows where to go, to the dread that does hide in the beds of the soul. To the false it will stare and burn out supplication of the hunger that binds in the worship of nothing. Take back yourself now, your will and your mind, this truth that must sing in this will to be found. Take back yourself now, you must fight for your life, as the absence will take till there's nothing to weep. Wings to protect, wings to behold, rise above the burnt ash of these dead legions now cold. For even the thief that has stolen but a moment's heart's light will rest well in the peace that these struggles have fought. Though the fire does burn the falseness away, the home that endures is better this way. The fire song sings in the breath of the kind as it echoes and echoes and echoes through time perfect in shape, purpose, and design. Do not mock what it gives as it does burn out the blight. These, the dark stars three, begin to converge into one mass looming above in the distance. Orator. Such is the hunger of the void. They whom can summon sight ring these bells clear, a lucidity of moment's choice bending the might of circumstance and foe. What is this space in between, this moment of choice whereby will is tested and character made? Sleep, friends. A black ziggurat appears from the star's black aura, and the order begins to climb to the top of this with the tree bell. As the mosaic of these creatures' dreams continues to move across the scroll, showing us the seduction and fall of one that could be any of us, we are all much capable to the best and worst of things. At the summit, the order claps six times and all turns black. The orator stands, rings the bell tree as all creatures wake. The dark star descends and comes to rest spinning above the bell tree. And the orator now holding the bell tree above a locking mechanism and before finally inserting the bell key into the seal states, the story is the song. I am the simple face of standing between choice. The end I don't know, but I will show you how this wish begins time and time again. The key is inserted. All goes to a blinding white, save the tree bell and dark star with the interlocking symbols from the coins. The star then engulfs the bells. The symbols converge. Fade to black. This has been a reading of These, the Bells of Six by Burning Cicada LTD, an animation in current production.